Ooh. I don't do bugs. I don't do bugs, y'all. I'm not good with those. Lord. <laughs> this wind is trying to fight with me today. Lord, the wind and the waves obey you, Father God, Lord. Tell them something. Okay. Fun fact, I actually got attacked by a squirrel when I was like a child, so I don't do well with squirrels. Hello? Hello, welcome back to Talks with Tally. My name is Tally. Welcome if you've never been here before and welcome back to those that have been. This is the segment on my channel where I speak about the Lord and what word he has placed on my heart for you all today. I just want to say hi. God bless you. I hope that you're doing well. And wow, we have a lot to catch up on. I feel like it's been quite some time. I just want to begin by saying I'm thankful to those that stick around. You know, when moments like this occur where I I can't bring myself to record and do these things. Um, to be very frank with you guys, and I'm just going to get right into it. Um, I, have been, I have basically been in a spiritual battle for a couple of weeks, honestly, where I felt like part of it was definitely my, is that a squirrel? Oh my God. It sees me seeing it. I don't know what to do with myself. Okay, fun fact, I actually got attacked by a squirrel when I was like a child, so I don't do well with squirrels. Hello? Oh my God, okay. It is watching me, it's watching me, it's watching me. Okay, I will say that this time frame has been a combo of about three things. One, spiritual warfare, obviously the enemy, we rebuke him in Jesus' name, doesn't want people to do exactly what God has called them to do. And two other things, I would say I have been overworking um, way too much and putting way too much on my plate to be able to keep up with everything. And three, there's also a part of it that's just laziness, the part of the flesh that doesn't want to do certain things. And God has called my attention on it and he has definitely had to correct his child um, to do the things that he has called me to do. And I will say, you see me here right now, uh, I haven't done my hair, I haven't put on my makeup today. I think I only did my eyebrows. They fleeky though, period. I don't think we even use that word anymore, but whatever. And I needed to like get out. I needed to get out of my house. I needed to get out of the state that I was in. I needed to get out of the setting that I was recording in. I needed to just reset because truly I felt like I was feeling a stagnation that was occurring, but it's because of course, the enemy doesn't want us to do the things that God has called us to do. And God has basically yelled at me like, what have you done with the things that I've put in your hand? And it's so funny because he's just perfect. And the way he, he divinely orchestrates everything is the way this word is exactly what I needed to hear. Because when God gives you a word, he gives it to you first. Okay, always. So we're gonna get right into it. And thank you for those of that have been patient with me. And I hope that this word truly is a blessing to your life because it's one I needed. And I know that there's periods in our lives where everybody needs to hear something like this. So we're just gonna get right into it, okay? Father God, Lord, I wanna say thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity of allowing me to be able to sit here, Lord, in this park today, Lord, to be able to share the word that you have placed on my heart, Lord. I know it's been some time, Lord, that I have done your will, Father God, when it comes to this channel, Lord. And first and foremost, I want to say sorry, Lord, and I wanna repent, Lord, and ask for your forgiveness in this matter, Lord. I want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to stand up, Lord, and give me that you have given me again, Lord, the opportunity and the will to do so. Father God, Lord, in this moment, Lord, I ask that it be you, Lord, glorifying yourself, Lord, and giving a word to the person across the screen in this moment, Lord, that it be a word that they need to hear today, Lord. Let it be all of you and none of me, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Place a filter in front of my mouth, Lord, so it is you speaking, Lord. Touch their hearts and encounter them in special ways, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, there are mad squirrels, y'all. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm not scared. No, fear is from the enemy. Amen. So, we are going to start the title of this word. So, this word actually was two words that I actually ended up combining, which God had actually led me to combine them. And so, the title that I'm going to put is, You've Witnessed Him Work with less. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you so much. So this is Talks with Tally, episode 11, actually. Originally, it was supposed to be titled a really long title. Um, so I guess I can make it the subtitle. Either way, it doesn't matter. I don't know what I'm going to title it when I post it or anything, but it was supposed to be called You're Running on E, but you've witnessed him work with less. And ooh, that one hits my chest because... <laughs> girl. That's exactly how I felt. And so we are going to get right into it really quickly. And I'm just going to read a verse that I love so much. I relate a lot to Jeremiah because Jeremiah be saying similar things to me like, Lord, I'm too young. Me, I'm not actually that young. I just like to give an excuse. Um, <laughs> but in this word, it's from Jeremiah 32 verse 27. And it says, oh, the pages must have flipped when I wasn't looking. Okay. This is the Lord speaking. And he says, I am the Lord, the God of all the peoples of the world. Is anything too hard for me? Nothing is too hard for our God. Amen. And so this word truly, it's a reminder that when we are at our wits end and we can't do it anymore on our own, right? First of all, that's exactly how I came to the feet of Christ in the first place. I knew I couldn't do this life on my own anymore. But even in his path, there's moments where we 
tend to redirect ourselves off of having our gaze on him and focusing on him to give us his strength to be able to continue to move forward. And we actually turn to ourselves. And then you catch yourself in the middle of doing that and you're like, wait, hold on, what, what am I doing? My strength derives from him. Everything I do, it derives from him. Everything I have, everything that I am, it derives from him. All glory to you, Lord. And you sometimes will catch yourself. And this is what I was doing. So this is why I can I can attest to this because none of us are perfect, okay? This walk is, is truly, it's a marathon, Lord. And it, it calls for endurance. In Hebrews, it tells us that this, <laughs> this walk with Christ, it calls for endurance. I'm gonna read that verse really quick, just in case somebody needs to hear that today. It's the only one that I've actually colored in in my inspire bible oh my gosh can i find it lord help me ah there it is hebrews 12 1 it says therefore since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd this wind is trying to fight with me today lord the wind and the waves obey you father god lord tell them something therefore since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith Ooh, we got people watching us. Oh, Lord, I'm not even going to get into that one because that's another thing that happened to me this week. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Actually, verse two, we're going to read two. It says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Lord. How beautiful. There has been moments where I will find myself literally trying to control everything, to do everything. I put everything on my plate all at once and I get so overwhelmed that I end up giving God the scraps, the remnant of my energy, of, of my priority. And don't get me wrong, I pray every single morning and I make sure that I get my word in and I spend some time with God. And that's what I have had to do in this moment of my life where things had gotten a little bit too overwhelming for me. I had to readjust everything. I had to get up earlier. I had to give God more hours. I had to make sure that nothing would trip me up in this walk. So I make sure that I prioritize him in everything. Now that means I'm getting up at four o'clock on my days off, all of my days off. I usually get three days off a week. Those days I'm getting up at four o'clock and I'm spending hours with the Lord and I'm making sure that I'm in communion with God as much as I can be in that day. Because the second one door opens, right? Or the enemy, of course, is going to want to sneak his way in there. He's a snake. Of course, he's going to try to be astute. We have to be shrewd like the serpent, right? And so as soon as he sees that there's been a crack door open, maybe you haven't gone to church maybe for like a week or two. Maybe you haven't prayed in a couple of days. Maybe you haven't read your Bible today or maybe for a couple of days. Whatever it may be, something that will draw you closer to God, if you're not doing it, he's going to take a note of it because the enemy is always watching us as are other people, right? So I suggest that in this moment, you pray that all those doors, all those portals be closed in Jesus' mighty name because we are here to run this race with endurance. But I always say this thing too, where it's like, God never called his children to be stupid. <laughs> he never called his children to be stupid. He gives us all the keys on how to be smart and be shrewd in this run, in this walk, whatever you want to call it. And it's not easy. There's lots of boxes to check off in what we need to have in order to have the attitude of Christ, to have the heart of Christ, to have the mind of Christ. And there's a lot there is a lot to pay attention to and make sure that you're doing it all times. And it feels like sometimes like we need to be an octopus and have eight hands and all these other things. But it's not until you realize that he is the one that's in control that you can let go and say, Lord, I give it to you. Right. I kind of got, I got kind of got sidetracked, but I feel like maybe somebody needs to hear that. Right. And so I have noticed that in that unfairness, right, where I give God the scraps, right, or when I feel like I have nothing to give, especially when I have nothing to give, that is when he shows up the most, though. And I'm not saying don't give God anything. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is that desperation rings and hits a little different to God. And so he literally will come and answer us. He will be our aid. He will be our help. And he will pick us up because it doesn't mean that you stay stuck where you are. My God, it's not that we stay stuck exactly with that where we are. He's not calling us to do that. We were supposed to live with glory upon glory. We're supposed to be lifted up. We're supposed to be living a life of victory. That is what he's put in us. That is what he's given us as an inheritance, as a child of God. I have noticed in my life, especially in my moments of desperation where I feel like I couldn't do it anymore, that is where he has flourished and shown up the most, Lord. And that's when I feel like my cries, my prayers, my efforts, even though they may not, you know, even though they may not mean much more, I feel like they definitely hit different to his ear. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe there's a scripture regarding that. I don't know. But that's what I felt from my own personal experience. And I'm sure many of you can actually attest to that too. This word is truly a, a reminder for you to reach out to the Lord, to ask him, to beg him, to plead to him and say, Lord, more of you and less of me, please God. And then when we find ourselves in that space, mm -hmm, I love this. And when we find ourselves in that space of less less of us that space right there that is where we create actually more space for him lord 
more space for him to take up. And that's when you tell the Lord, I give you full permission and authority. I welcome you here. I need you, actually. I cannot do this on my own. And unfortunately, there's times where we feel like we need to prove something to ourselves. Hold up. We are sadly mistaken. Who are you trying to prove something to? There's so many times where I was like, God, you know, I'm sorry. Because I've always tried to prove things to myself as if what I care about, my what I think about myself matters the most. And I'm not saying that your self-identity and your self-esteem does not matter. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is we need to focus on what do you think of me, Lord? There's been so many times where I ask God, God, I want to be. And this is truly, <laughs> this is when I got smacked in the face when I just realized, and I'm actually just kind of realizing it right now, Lord. I have asked the Lord so many times, Lord, make me someone that you can trust. The way that he trusts John enough to bring, give his mother to him when he died on the cross, for him to look after her. Make me someone that you can trust, Lord. Do you know how much of an ask that is? The same way that the scribe in Matthew 8, he, he asked the Lord, he said, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus literally responded, <laughs> And long story short, in my my version of the Bible, Jesus basically responded by saying, you sure about that? <laughs> but he says to him, he says, foxes have dens and... Um what was the other part? Birds have nests, but the son of man doesn't have anywhere to lay his head. Are you sure you're willing to give up everything? Everything that you have, everything that you own, everything that you are, everything that you think that you are, everything that you want to be, to be exactly what he's called you to be. Why are you so worried about what other people think, about what you think? God, what is it that you think about me? God, how can I get to be that person that you can trust? And this is exactly how this word came to fruition. Where it's like, in the word he says, in I'm pretty sure he said, I'm going to find the verse. I know in Spanish, it's like, si lo poco eres fiel, lo mucho te pondré. The, the word is, it's Luke 16, 10. And it says, if you're faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. But if you're dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And this is literally the way that the Lord has literally punched me in the face a couple times. Me dio pal de pescozones, okay? How my Puerto Ricans would say. Because I was literally sitting there in a service the other day. And it was literally like, God was kind of telling me like, what are you doing with the things that I've given you? He literally has given me this camera. He's given me the word i have 70 words here not singular words i mean like preachings okay and i have not touched any of it in a month just because of what i wanted because of what i thought what i felt unmotivated and tired and lazy my body felt heavy this is a work that we do for him and that we do for the others surrounding us the word that god gives you it's not just for you notice that first and foremost it goes to you but it's for it to be shared with others and so now i have made a vow to the lord god i'm gonna do it unmotivated i'm gonna do the work because how many times do we go to work my god how many times do we go to work even though we don't want to go to work but we know that there's a reward <laughs> My God, there's a compensation for it. And so I sat there and I was like, Lord, how dare I be so hypocritical to sit here and ask for more to, you know, whether it be growing on the YouTube, whether it be more ministry, whether it be um, meeting more people to be able to sh share the gospel, whatever it is. And with the little that the Lord has already given me, I can't even do that. That's it's embarrassing. I know some of us like we really like the thing is sometimes we really just hate help. We have this pride that really doesn't allow us to receive help from him. First of all, you got to break that down first and foremost. But it's because truly we will never get to the place that we need to get to that he wants us to get to without him doing it all basically anyways and giving it to him and surrendering it to him. People really, really think and love to say that surrender and submission is weakness. What if I told you it was actually the greater strength because you're fighting against everything inside of you to actually do so? My God, Lord, speak, God. Yet little do we know that there is always something to depend on. For some, it may be drugs, it may be alcohol, it may be money, it may be other things. I would much rather depend on the one that gave me the life in the first place, that knows what my purpose is and that knows where I'm going and that knows how to get there. There's no better resource. I think some of us also, we, we don't want to accept help because we also have this fear of being let down. Do you know who your God is? My God, my God. Some of us also have this experience where we don't want to receive help because some people have thrown it in our face. Ooh. Okay, I don't do bugs, I don't do bugs, y'all. I'm not good with those. Our God is a God of new beginnings, of forgiveness of starting over of restoration and i know i'm kind of like getting off on tangents here i'll get back to the word in a minute but i just feel like maybe somebody really does need to hear this i remember i was with my first ever boyfriend for the first time right and and it was my first ever relationship i mean and i remember how i always used to say like i don't really care what people think i don't care what people think all this other stuff all this pride it was a lie first of all um i had this this worry about looking weak or imperfect i remember i got my first little beat down car it was like a 2001 mitsubishi lancer i think it was <laughs> and i remember that my ex-boyfriend at the time he was like lived like an hour from me and I would always go and drive to see him red flag anyways <laughs> no I'm just kidding he he can visit me too but that's not the point anyways I remember because of like where I was financially I was like literally like in college okay I didn't have money like that I still don't have money like that so it doesn't really matter but 
I remember like I had like no money to like, go to mechanics or anything like that. And I feel like I think it was my timing belt or something like that. It would like every time I would turn it on, it would like screech super loud. And like I would park outside of his family, um, his family's home because he lived obviously with his parents at the time. And it would literally screech so loud and wake everybody up at like five in the morning when I would have to like leave and go to work in the morning. And I was just so, so, so embarrassed, especially because they weren't like well off or anything, but they had a house. My family doesn't have a house. We've never had a house. We've never owned a house. We've never had any of that. And I compared myself to him, my partner, my boyfriend. And I always, because of my pride, I always went to him though, for the most part. And whenever I had him pick me up, I would go have him pick me up at my friend's house instead of my own house. Or I would make him park down the street from my house and then like walk down the street and then meet him and already be outside when he got there because I didn't want him to see where I lived because it was like a rundown apartment even though the, out- the inside was beautiful the outside looked rugged <laughs> and I lived in the ghetto it is what it is <laughs> it is what it is that's what I was raised in his dad was like a cop or like a state trooper or something like he came from some money at least I didn't okay my mom did the best that she could I love my mother I never went without food period okay amen god bless my mother I love her so much she was she is an amazing mother I love you ma if you're watching this I was afraid that he was going to judge me because of what's on the outside of my home you know like the paint was all messed up um where I was had a bunch of like broken glass and like I've noticed before some nasty things on the ground and um needles and of course there's people with addictions walking around and homeless people as well um and all the apartments around me looked tattered and torn down like they were abandoned and I thought he would leave me because of that and of course I was wrong I di- but I digress what I will say is that this is your reminder today to let go of your pride, to let go of wanting control and knowing. And I'm reminding you in this moment, the Lord is reminding you in this moment that he is God. He is the Lord, your God. Nothing is impossible for him. And guess what? You've seen him work with less than what you think you can give him now. My God. So my question for this whole thing is, right, let's read in Matthew. Okay, we're going to read the story in Matthew 14, 13 to 20. I hope I copied and pasted it in here because I don't have internet outside. I could do the personal hotspot, but you know I'm lazy anyways. Bye. So it says Matthew 14, 13 to 20. It says, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd and had, he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that the They can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We, and then the disciples replied, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. They answered. And then Jesus said, bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks. He gave thanks before the blessing period. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. And then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And it said disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left. I think that's what it says. Um, if I cut it off, I apologize. And so then we look right. And in Matthew chapter 15 verses 29 to 39. Okay. Oh my God. It's so beautiful. It says, Jesus left there and went along the Sea of Galilee, Galilee, and then he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet, and he healed them. The people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well. Ooh, I love my Lord. The lame walking and the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and I, and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry. These are two different stories, y'all. Or they may collapse on the way. His disciples answered, where could we get enough bread in this remote place to feed such a crowd? (laughs) When you realize that the disciples were teens, you're kind of like, oh, wow, (laughs) makes a lot of sense. (laughs) Sometimes I want to smack them up a little bit. How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied, and a few small fish. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. Again, he told them to sit down and watch him work. I love that. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave the deci- to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. He gave thanks before. Oh my God. How many of us know that we need to believe before we see it? That's called faith. Oh my gosh. What is it, that verse? It, I believe it's in Hebrews. Faith is the, oh my gosh, Lord, give it to me. Give it to me, Lord. It's Hebrews 11. 1. It says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Ooh. Therefore, <laughs> what will happen? Period. Um, Sorry, I'm like putting verses together. <laughs> Where was I? Verse Verse 37 says, they all ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was 4,000 men besides women and children. After Jesus had sent the crowd away, he got into the boat and went into 
the vicinity of Magadan. So my question is for today. So why do we question Christ about feeding the 4,000 when we have already previously witnessed him feeding 5,000? When he had to feed the 5,000, he had less than when he had to feed the 4,000. Are you understanding what's happening here? He had less to work with and fed a greater deal of people, a greater number of people. My God. Lord. My Lord is so beautiful. So it's kind of like the Lord is saying like, if I can get you out of that, what makes you think I can't get you out of this or through anything? The problem is, is that we sometimes like to let doubt creep in, but has his faithfulness not always come through? <laughs> Deuteronomy 7, 9, it says, understand therefore that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. Faithfulness hmm, is literally in the essence of his character. It means remaining loyal and steadfast. A synonym, a synonym, a synonym, a synonym of this being constant, true to the facts or original. And therefore, as we can see from Genesis all the way to the end of Revelation, we see that when the Lord says something, he follows it by doing exactly what he said that he was going to do. My God, he speaks, then he does. My God. And this is exactly what we also, because remember, we need to be like Christ. We are not Jesus, but we need to be like him. So this is what we should work to be. When we say that we're going to do something that we're going to do it. When we make a promise to the Lord, we do it. Whether we want to or not, whether we're comfortable or not. And it doesn't mean that he, he doesn't have grace and he's not understanding. There's been times where I'm like, Lord, I want to get up early and do this. And boom, next thing you know, I wake up at nine. I'm like, excuse me. That's super late for me, okay? And so there are moments where we have this grace, but I also encourage you to be immediately obedient like Joshua. When God says to do something, you can see in the word. I'm not sure if there's been times where he questioned it. I remember reading it, and from what I remember, at least in the book of Joshua, Joshua, as soon as God told him to do something, he was okay, like, boom, period, got you. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> like, he, No questions asked, he just did it. And that's exactly how we should do. When the centurion man comes to Jesus and he asked him for a healing of his child or young servant is what some Bibles say. The centurion man is a Roman soldier. Okay. He should not be believing in anybody that's Jewish. Okay. He is the enemy at this point of the Jews. And so for him to be believing in Jesus and asking Jesus for a miracle, first of all, huge gut punch to the pride. Okay. But he's, he recognized the authority of Jesus. And that's what a lot of us are failing to do is recognize the authority of Jesus. He says, I also am a man under authority. So he realizes and he knows and he recognizes what authority is. That when he tells somebody to do it, they do it. When he tells somebody come, they come. He was literally explaining and picturing out everything, how we should act as his children. So this is the exact type of faithfulness that we need to try to have. That when we say we're going to do something, we do our best to make sure that it happens. And that's exactly why he tells us, wow, I just realized that. There's obviously other reasons to this, but I just, wow. Thank you, Lord. Oh, wow. The Lord literally teaches us how to be also faithful people in the word. He says in his word to not make any vows or, or take oaths or anything like that. He says in his word to make sure that your yes just means a yes. It means be about what you said. <laughs> All right, let's see here really quick. I want you guys to look up Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. Um, so this parable speaks about three servants where basically the master decided to give them certain amounts of money and two of them did well with it and they um, they were fruitful and they multiplied that money that was given to them so they could invest it and whatnot. And then one of them decided to not do that. And long story short, I want you to read it for yourself. But what this is saying is what the Lord gives you, it is for you to be fruitful and multiply with it. It is for you to flourish and to grow with it. It doesn't mean to hide it. My God, it doesn't mean because that's what one of the servants does. He digs a hole and he hides the money that was given to him. So it really doesn't matter how much the Lord gives you. It matters that whatever he gives you, do with it what he has called you to do. Lord. <laughs> In Matthew 25, 23, it says his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And it's so funny because I remember a time period in my life where I was really, really struggling with nursing school and everything like that. And I truly, I needed to find just $5 just to get gas to put in my car to go to school. That was like an hour away. And even then I put my faith in him saying, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do, but I know what you're going to do something. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, he pays off a scholarship that's a couple thousand. That's the kind of God that we serve. And it's not just about money. It's not just about these kind of provisions. Okay, it has to do with the fact that when we feel like there's no way out, when we don't see that there's a solution to our problem, that there's no prescription to the to the problem that we have going on, he always has a way. He is the way maker. He is the miracle worker. He makes it happen. So when we feel like people are talking about us, when we feel down, we don't have self-esteem, when we feel like we're not capable, thank God that we are not capable, that he's the one that actually makes us capable. My God. 
when you realize that he is everything, he has his hand on everything, that is when you learn the true essence of God. He is in everything. He is in all the little things and all the big things. But if he cannot trust you with the little, what is he supposed to do with you when greater things are supposed to come along? And that's why he says that if only we had faith the size of a mustard seed. He has worked with less in order to give you more. But he needs to see how you work with the less that he's given you in order to be able to trust you going forward. And I think about it sometimes, I'm like, wow, like if all you require is a mustard seed size faith, that's literally like a pinpoint. Imagine how little, almost non-existent faith people must have had for him to call them you of little faith. <laughs> so this is a reminder that you may be running on E today, this week, this month, but he is the God of the impossible. I don't know about you guys, but I know, listen y'all, when I start to see my car get to E, <laughs> I start to disbelieve, okay? I start to doubt, I start to panic. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to where I need to go. How much more can I stretch this out? Because I don't have what it takes to get to where I need to go. But in order for me, my God, Lord, in order for me to make it to where I need to go, I need to be filled up again. I need a hookup. I need a connection that can give me enough. And actually what he does is always give more than enough for you to get to where you need to go, to be who you need to be. Because a full tank can actually bring you farther than your destination sometimes. Lord, <laughs> I don't know, this camera and this wind, this wind is sent straight from hell. Lord, help me. Maybe it was also the banging on the, the table. <laughs> I should probably stop doing that. So I, I encourage you to be able to say today, Lord, I may have nothing to give, or I feel like I may have nothing to give, Lord, but as long as I have you, as long as I can hold on to the hem of your garment, as long as, Lord, I can hold on to the promises of what you've said, I know I have your defense. I know that you, I have your love. I know that I have your blessings because everything that you have said has already been done. And it's interesting because sometimes some of us, I know y'all, some of them, some of y'all out there be doing this, where you start to see that your car is going on E. And people love to make women some, like, make fun of women sometimes because we do this. And it's like, we ignore the lights going on on the dashboard. <laughs> and we just tend to ignore it and that's a problem when you start to see a lack of something and you ignore it it festers and it grows that lack takes up more space lack of energy lack of wanting to read your bible lack of motivation lack of asking god questions lack of wanting to pray lack of wanting to worship lack of wanting to prioritize him but if you look really 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 close it's just your light on your dash that's on you're running on e but this is your sign to get filled up again. Cause you know what's really crazy is that even then when you really think that you really have nothing, cause there may be some people that watch this that they're like, I really have nothing though. I have nothing at all. First of all, you got breath. First of all, you got life. But even then, let's say you had nothing. I know a God that makes dry bones rise. My God. I know a Lord that makes dead bones live. Okay, God, this lack, this running on E, if you run on E too long, it causes damage to your engine. I'm not talking about an engine and it needs to get fixed. So before it gets to that point, cause these are mechanics too, Lord, I love you. You have warning signs. Take preventative measures. That word came through really strong there. Take preventative measures. My God, I don't know who needs to see that, but that that's strong, period. So I want you guys to go to Luke 17 verses five to 10. It says, the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. It is perfectly okay for you to ask the Lord to increase your faith. There's so many times where I have thought, okay, well, faith is something that I have to do. I have to be in control of, I am responsible for it, that I have to increase. No, this is something that we can pray to him to do. And so it says in verse six, he replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down and to eat? Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. He's a servant he's talking to. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. And this is not to say that his children are not un, un, you know, unworthy, like undeserving, unloved beings. We are so loved. What this is saying is that when God tells you to do something and you do it, this is not for you to glorify yourself with. This is not for you to build your ego and build up your head with. This is literally just you doing the work of the Lord and all the glory belongs to him. We're finishing with this and it says Luke 18 8 I tell you he will see that they get justice and quickly this is speaking of the Lord however when the son of man comes will he find faith on the earth this word is about faith and endurance he doesn't require much the thing about mustard seeds is that they will grow well in most soils okay but they will produce the most richest seeds in well-prepared well-nurtured well-drained soil and then they grow into like these huge plants I just 
Know which foundation you're building your house on. Know what soil you are planting your seeds in and make sure that you are nourishing your soil. The last thing I'll leave you with, Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not a human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? My God is good. He's so good. I love you, Lord. No matter where you feel that you are right now in this walk, he has your hand. He has his hand over you and he will supply everything that you need. You need not worry about it. He tells us not to worry. Look it up. It's in Matthew. So that's the word that I have for you guys today. I'm going to pray for y'all and let's go. But Father God, Lord, I want to say thank you so much for the people across the screen in this moment, Lord. I want to say thank you, Lord, that anybody under the sound of my voice, I ask you in this moment, Lord, that they have received a word from you, Father God. Let it be, Lord, encountering them, Lord, building them up, Lord, liberating them, Lord, from any strongholds in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. May we break, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, any strongholds that are keeping them down, keeping them lazy, keeping them distracted, keeping them comfortable, Lord, keeping them, Lord, in a place where they are not doing what you are telling them to. Let it be you, Father God, encountering them in a special way, Lord, so that they can get up, rise up and say, there will be joy in the morning. Lord, let it be you, Lord, helping them to walk in obedience, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Let this word be a fruit that continues to multiply and be fruitful, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I ask that you help the person across the scene in this screen in this moment, Lord, and that it be you, Lord, holding their hand along the way so that they can continue to do exactly what you have called them to do, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray over them, protect them, Lord, and help them on this path. Give them endurance, Father, and give them faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you all for spending time with me, and I'm going to see you guys in the next one. God bless you. Bye.